we are going to be looking at something called the normal distribution. As an introduction to what that means, uh, I'm going to look at an activity here. Uh, if you're my student, you might have done this on your own or with a partner or maybe not had time for it. But it says here, with a partner or on your own, roll two dice 50 times. Record the sum for each roll in the frequency distribution table below. Then draw a frequency polygon or a line graph to represent the distribution of the data. So I've already done that because I don't want to spend the time on this video rolling two dice 50 times. Uh, and as I did that, here's what happened. So I rolled the sum of 2, which is a 1 plus a 1, only one time. I rolled the sum of 3, 2 times, sum of 4, 4 times, sum of 5, 3 times, sum of 6, 6 times, etc., etc. And I never rolled, uh, in this particular case, I never rolled double sixes. So I had no sums of 12. <clears throat> and then I drew a line graph. So what you'd notice if you kept doing this more and more and more and compared to several groups as you did this uh, is that these sums that occur in the middle would happen the most often. Uh, the reason is for that is because there are more combinations that can add up to 6, 7, and 8 than any other sum. Like 6 can be made up of a 1 and a 5, a 2 and a 4, uh, or two threes, and a 7 has even more possibilities, a 1 and a 6, a 2 and a 5, uh, <clears throat> or a 3 and a 4. So, uh, in this particular situation, this is actually called normal distribution, but uh, let's just look at the conclusion to this activity first. Based on your data and the data of groups around you, what sum do you think is the most likely to be rolled? So if you had looked at lots of groups, you would notice that probably the number 7, actually, would be the most likely to be rolled. And there are lots of ways, and so this is the reason, there's lots of ways to get 7 as a sum. Okay, uh, so part B, the key ideas, is let's define a normal distribution, or let me just show you another example of a normal distribution. Uh, here's the grade book of one of my classes, and what you'll notice here, so here is, is the grades, is that I have three students getting a C minus, three students five students getting a C, ten students getting a C plus, eight getting a B, and four getting an A. This is normal. The reason this is normal is because it's normal for uh, you to have more average students. So I have lots of average students in the C-plus range. And as you go in either direction, whether you're getting lower grades or higher grades, you're going to have less and less of those students. Uh, there's other things that are normally distributed. In fact, almost all statistics are normally distributed. If you think about height, you'll always have or tend to have people who are close to average height. And then you have fewer and fewer students who are super, super tall and fewer and fewer people or students who are super, super short or IQ, your intelligence. You tend to have lots of people who are, have average intelligence and some that have higher intelligence and some that have lower intelligence. So this is normal distribution and it comes up quite often uh, throughout all statistics. And that's what we're going to be investigating here. <clears throat> so the key idea here is what is normal distribution? And you might notice that this looks very similar to my class or grades that I just showed you. Normal distribution or curve is data that results in a symmetrical meaning it's same on both sides of the mean, symmetrical distribution curve about the mean. It's also called, in a lot of cases, a bell curve because it kind of looks like the shape of a bell. <clears throat> Here's some characteristics of normal distribution. So for things that are normally distributed, which is almost everything in statistics, here are some characteristics. Uh, characteristic one, is, which we've already seen, is that the graph is symmetrical and shaped somewhat like a bell. Number two is that about 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So what that means uh, is that here's the, here would be an average student. If you went one standard deviation, and we looked at that in the previous lesson, in either direction of that mean, 68% of data would fall within that range. So that's why I have two 34s, or if you go one, one standard deviation in either direction. Uh, this will make more sense as we get into more practical examples. Uh, the next part would be that about 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So if you look at the middle and go two standard deviations in either direction, about 95% of data would fall within that range. And the final thing to look at is approximately 99.7, so almost all data is within three standard deviations of the mean. 
Okay, uh, so we're going to get into some examples here, which are going to help you understand this actual, these actual statistics and actual numbers. Uh, but before we do that, let's look at some things that may or may not be normally distributed. So example number one here says, is the data in each set normally distributed? So regardless of what this data is about, we're noticing that there's intervals and frequencies. So we're looking at these numbers. Essentially, is what's happening here... Are most of the is most of the data in the middle or towards the mean, and does it get less and less as we go further and further from the mean in either direction? So if you do look at those numbers, uh, <clears throat> it does look like if we start at 3, 9, 18, 15, 11, and 2, a graph would look something like this, a frequency of 3, 9, 18, 15, 11, and 2. That would look somewhat symmetrical as well as shaped like a bell curve. So is that normally distributed? The answer here would be yes. Okay, uh, the next one, if we looked at that particular, those particular frequencies, we've got frequencies of 7, 3, 8, 10, 12, and 9. This looks like a rather uh, random sample or frequency table here uh, because it doesn't appear to be the greatest in the middle. In fact, if we were to draw it, we would have 7, and then it actually dips down to 3, goes up to 8 and 10, then goes all the way up to 12, and then goes down to 9. That is not normal. So the answer here would be no, it's not normal. And in the last one, what you'll notice is it goes 1, 3. So the frequencies are increasing up to 28, and then go down to 8. So they do increase and then decrease, but would this be symmetrical? I don't think so, because 28 happens the most. So it would look more like this. And that's not symmetrical, although it goes up and down. So the answer here as far as normal distribution would be no. Okay, so that's an introduction to normal distribution. Let's look at an another example where we can get more practical. Here it says intelligence quotient or IQ is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So the average person has, and I'll put this right in the middle, this is how we indicate or, or draw on this particular normal distribution to help us understand it, uh, the average person has an IQ of 100. And if the standard deviation of, is 15, we would just add 15 as we are going up by standard deviation, then subtract 15 as we're going down. So one standard deviation above average is 115, two is 130, etc. And if we go down from there, uh, you'll see that these are the IQs that fall in each standard deviation. Part B says the following. It says, what percent of people have an IQ between 85 and 115? So if we look at 85, which is right here, and 115, which is right here, that would be, so between those two values would be the, this group of people here. And that would be a 34% plus a 34%. In other words, this is one standard deviation on either side of the mean. So that would be 68% of people would have an IQ between 85 and 115. All right, part C <clears throat> says, what percent of people have an IQ between 55 and 130? So after you've labeled this, it becomes quite easy uh, to visualize. So here is an IQ of 55. Here's an IQ of 130. So the data between those is all of these regions here. So if we just add them up, We'll have 2.35% as our first section there, plus 13.5%, plus 34, plus 34, plus 13.5%. And if you add those up, 97.35% of people would have an IQ between those values. Uh, part D, finally, or not finally, there's two more parts to this question. What percent of people have an IQ above 115? So here's an IQ of 115 that I'm highlighting here in pink. So above 115 would be this group of people right here that I'm highlighting in pink. So that would be 13.5% plus 2.35% plus 0.15%. And that would be 16% of people have an IQ above 115. And part E is applying uh, normal distribution to an actual population. So it says, if Mr. Martins teaches 190 students, approximately how many have an IQ above 115? So we know that from the previous question, 16% of his students would. So 16% of his students. Or in other words, if we apply this to the population, it would be 16% of 190 students. And to calculate that, 
you would convert 16 into a decimal, so 16% into a decimal, and multiply by 190 students. And on my calculator, you can see here that that is roughly, you would predict that I have roughly 30 students that have an IQ above 115. All right, so the last particular question <clears throat> here is example number three. It says, investigate the normal curves for the masses of luggage for men and women on international flights. <clears throat> so the women is in red and the men is in blue. It says, who has the greater average luggage mass, women or men? Well, what we'll see here, average is the middle. So if we look at the middle for women, which I'll indicate with a red line, this would be the mean for women which is average, okay? The average man I'll put right in the middle as well, which is right here. It's actually exactly the same. So the mean here, even though the women have a taller uh, particular mean there in this particular case, uh, the mean or average would be exactly the same. So it would be the same, okay? <clears throat> Part B, who has a more consistent luggage mass, women or men? So consistency, as we saw in standard deviation section 5.3, has to do with how close stuff is to the mean. And what you'll notice here is that women, if you look at their curve, that tends to be more bunched or cluttered together, whereas men, which I'm just indicating in blue here, their luggage masses are more spread out. So in this case, because the women are all closer to the mean or cluttered together, that means that they're more consistent. So that would be women. And the reason is they are more close to the mean. Okay? If you're in my class, you will do the following question uh, and get myself to initial it.